All right, good morning, everybody, and happy Monday. What a beautiful day in Turlock. Welcome, everybody. Patty does a great job with every single thing she touches, but she ordered this weather just for us. So thank you so much, Patty. It is a beautiful day out here, and I'm so glad we've picked today to celebrate the um, reopening of the Turlock Public Library. This is a very, very special event for us. It's my privilege to um, welcome all of you. My name is Jody Hayes and I serve as the county's chief executive officer on behalf of our board of supervisors here in Stanislaus County. Um, I didn't build this library, but I do wanna take a moment to thank uh, a lot of people who are here today to celebrate with us who were very instrumental in putting this entire project together. And it's important that we recognize uh, just a flood of volunteers and individuals uh, that served all different kinds of capacities to get us here where we're at today. I do wanna mention that we are live streaming today's event, um, which is uh, uh, great in this era that we're in today. We try to do everything as multimedia as we can. So we're live streamed at stanislauslibrary.org. And uh, we thank the entire uh, audiovisual team and everybody at the library for making sure that we could put all of that together. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank our County Board of Supervisors for their support for this entire project. Thank you guys very, very much. Past and present. Uh, with us here so far this morning, we have our Chairman of the Board of Supervisors, Vito Chiesa. Welcome, Vito. And we have a couple of condits sitting with us here this morning. Supervisor Buck Condit first, right there. There you go, Buck. And Supervisor Chance Condit. Welcome, Chance. I believe Supervisor Withrow is on his way or interrupted, but we're hoping to see him in a little bit. And Supervisor Graywall does send his regrets for not being able to be here today. He was a strong supporter of this project, but was unfortunately unable to join us uh, this morning. We do have many dignitaries, friends, and contributors uh, from this great community. I'm going to do my best to recognize as many as I can, and I'm going to apologize in advance if I miss anybody. Uh, anybody, feel free to yell at me if I do miss somebody along the way. Uh, I want to first start uh, by thanking our uh, mayor of Turlock, Mayor Amy Bublack is here. Mayor, you there? I saw you sitting somewhere. Raise your hand. Oh, she's in the back. She gave up her seat. And I also believe we have council member Andrew Nazarati. Did I see Andrew is right there? Yes. And our vice mayor, Pam Franco. Pam, there you are right there. And I also just wanna recognize, cause I saw him in the uh, audience here. We have our former mayor, uh, Brad Bates is here. Brad, you over there, right over there. And former council member, Becky Arenado is here as well. I saw Becky, there you are, okay. Um, I'm just checking to make sure I didn't miss anybody else on Turlock City Council, right? Okay, perfect. Um, I want to uh, recognize we also have our interim city manager, uh, Susan Eddy is right over here. There she is right there. I, oh, I'm sorry, Sarah. Oh, got it wrong. Sorry about that very much. We have a typo. Sorry. Um, so we're grateful to the city of Turlock and your entire staff. It does take a lot of support from our uh, local city and your team to put together a project like this. So that includes staff from fire, planning, transit. We appreciate all of you for your support and assistance along the way. Thank you very much. I also wanna thank, thank the nice folks here at the Turlock Senior Center. Uh, they've put up with all of the dust and the construction and all the reconfiguration and everything going on. Um, as well as our temporary library facilities and everything else. They've just been wonderful partners for us. And we're glad to give you back your senior center. And we got a library over here. Thank you. Uh, there are a few different groups in the community that really, really make a difference and just seem extremely, and I'm going to say tenacious in the right way. Um, and it makes a huge difference in our community. And one of those special groups in Stanislaus County are the Friends of the Turlock Library. If you've hung around these folks, you know that uh, they're about getting business done. They have a strong dreams, vision for the city, for the community, and particularly the role that the library plays. And we're so fortunate, and it's just a privilege to recognize uh, all of those folks. Um, I wanna start by recognizing Pat Portwood who's sitting here down front, Pat. 
Pat's going to be saying a few words as part of our program, I think, in a little bit here. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, breeze through the, the rest of these real quick. Uh, I've got Sabra Stafford, uh, Jane Clough, Carmen Ingalls, Brooks Judd, Diane Gray, Mary Ward, Karen Johnson, Jackie Over, Oyer, I'm sorry, uh, and Mike Seifert. If I missed anybody, I apologize, but a big round of applause for the Turlock, Friends of the Turlock Library. And I, I do love all the Friends of the Turlock Library, but I particularly love the fundraising committee, right? Because <laughs> I am responsible for the county budget and I do know what this place cost it. Uh, they don't come free, but I will tell you that the following people helped raise over $1 million to support this project. The fundraising committee, John and Jeannie Ferrari, Hannah and Dieter Renning, Ashley Volk, Patrick Jensen, Kathy Smith, Tina Bates, Ken Bethel, Mary Jackson, Lindsay Herrera. I wanna thank all of you. And if I missed anybody, I apologize. Great job for the fundraising committee. I have a million reasons to thank all of you. Okay. Um, you know, I also want to recognize uh, that uh, we have a couple of special guests with us today, Betty uh, Thompson and her son, John Thompson. Betty and John, are you here? I, okay, they're right here. Welcome. Uh, Betty's late husband, Paul F. Thompson, was a former director of the library in 1968 when the library moved from the Carnegie Center to its current location. We're so happy that you were able to join us, and I'm sure John would be very, very proud. Thank you for being here. I'm sorry, Paul. I'm, I'm so sorry. Mixing up John. John's right here. I'm so sorry. Um, I also want to uh, recognize, I think we saw uh, our Yosemite Community College District Trustee uh, Milton Richardson. Are you, are you here? There, uh, Richards, right, right there in the back. Okay, thank you very much. He's here. I do want to thank a couple of our uh, county officials outside of the board that were able to join us this morning. Uh, first, uh, Sheriff Jeff Dirks, he's over here keeping us safe right there. Thank you very much for being here, Sheriff. And I believe our clerk recorder register of voters, um, Donna Linder's here as well. There she is right there. If you're not registered to vote, see uh, Donna right over there. She'll hook you up. She does a great job with elections. If you hear anything about elections, you just call her directly. She'll straighten it all out. She's got it uh, dialed in. Okay, I do believe we, we did see a representative from um, Senator Borges office uh, was here. Okay, thank you very much for being here. And I think you have a certificate that we'll be receiving a little bit later. So thank you very much for being here today. Um, I certainly wanna recognize our county librarian, Sarah Denton. She's right down here. Welcome, Sarah. It's been a privilege to get to know Sarah in this capacity. And for those of you who have, have uh, not worked with Sarah and the wonderful staff she has here at the library, I encourage you to get to know them. Um, they have a heart of gold and you can see it in their work every single day here in our community. Uh, it's just a privilege to work with you and your entire leadership team, many of whom are, are here with us today. Um, I wanna recognize former county librarian. I met her just prior to this event, Judy Ferreira. And um, are you here, Judy? Where, where are you at now, Judy? I see you're moving around. There you are right there, Judy. So she's got all the fun historical stories of the building. And our former librarian, Diane McDonald is also watching live stream. Hi, Diane, everybody wave for Diane. Thanks for joining us. Diane was very instrumental in helping this project move forward um, prior to handing it over to Sarah as well. We got a lot of members of our county department heads that are here. Thank you all for being here, as well as our broader county leadership team. And of course, you're going to be seeing and hearing from our project manager, Patricia Hill Thomas, who's, who's right over here. Doesn't like a lot of recognition, recognition, but she's the superstar today, including the building right there, Patricia Hill Thomas. Um, Patricia uh, does some great, great work, but she is um, supported by a very broad team from our capital projects and planning team. Um, so uh, you're going to meet all of them later and we'll do some recognition for them as well. And I'm going to go ahead and at this point, turn it over to supervise, I'm sorry, our chairman of the board of supervisors, uh, Vito Chiesa. Uh, Vito, it's all yours. Thank you all very much for listening to me this morning. Look forward to celebrating with you. Supervisor Terry Withrow, thank you. <laughs> so one other important person that uh, I saw walk in, 
uh, CSU President Ellen Jun. Uh, you've been a great partner in everything related to the county and the city, and I want to thank you uh, again on behalf of Stanislaus County. So I'm going to ask everyone to please stand. We're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Flag is over here. And then please remain standing. And I'm going to ask Kate Vanderveen to come up and sing the national anthem afterwards. Kate is a ninth grader at Ripon Christian, and she comes from one of the Capital Projects team, a daughter of one of our Capital Projects team. So, ready, salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner and way for the land of the free and the home of the brave. It reminds me when when kids show up to our Board of Supervisors meeting and we say the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone is just there. Everyone's in tune and it's great. Thank you, Kate, very much. Sarah, you should be very proud, for sure. Well, it is a beautiful summer morning and it's a long time coming. I don't need to tell everyone. I, ever since I joined the Board of Supervisors, even before that, there's been a push to do something about fixing up the Kerwak uh, Library. So I'm not sure, are the Rennings here today? Peter and Hannah, are they here? They, they were here yesterday, and I was, I'm a storyteller, right? And so right when I got on the board, it was either in 2009 or early in 2010, I had a meeting with some folks, but I remember specifically the Rennings, who are a part of the Friends of the Library, and, and they were um, very cordial, and, and the discussion about it's time to fix the Turlock Library. And, you know, the time was passed, and the, the county ended up buying a building in uh, Salida, the Bruners building, and there was some debt on the property. And so I didn't know that at the time, but I had the conversation. But my takeaway when I left here was that we've had enough. And they, if you know the Rennings, they don't ever speak that way. But I had that feeling that that everyone had had it up to about here. So it, it took a little while. And then back in 2017 at the Carnegie Art Center, and I always have to, you know, remind myself that uh, the Carnegie Art Center has been a great partner in Lisa McDermott, and there'll be some art on display from an art contest inside. And just we, we got together with HOK to try and see what the vision of the, the people of Turlock wanted to see. Other than a bigger library, what, what did they want to see inside? What was important to them? And that date was, I always look through here, the date was March 25th, 2017. And I remember the, uh, the Assyrians were uh, marching. They were going to the fairgrounds because I actually went to that event afterwards. And we all stood up and walked over. There were about 75 individuals from the city participating or our citizens from the city participating. And, and through that, uh, we came up with a vision and a vision statement. And the vision statement was connecting us with our community and the world. And I think it's so appropriate. But it was it's from the... Friends of the Turlock Library, not only that, and the group of 75 folks. And it reminds me, and if you know Patty Hill Thomas and myself, we always like to use quotes, but it comes back right to what Margaret Mead had said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. 
Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. So I, from that, we have what, where we are today. Uh, just absolutely excited uh, to be at this point. Uh, again, long overdue. And we, we think about trying to do a capital project during the pandemic. If you came by here, you saw everyone following the rules, masking rules. Uh, we had great builders. We had uh, great architects. But it's really a collaboration to get something, something done. Uh, there's so many people to thank. First, I got to thank the Board of Supervisors. And, and let me just remind you that we just dedicated the Empire Library, which ran absolutely synonymous, right? We were running a parallel course with the two libraries. Was Bill O'Brien's vision to replace that? Kristen Olson carried, uh, carried the water. And then when we broke ground, or when we, when we uh, cut the ribbon, Buck Condit was sitting in the seat. So these projects are not fast. And you have to understand... Uh, we want to get it. You have to go slow to go fast. We want to get the project right. And that was a great example. It takes some time to get these projects. I'm fortunate that I've been here for quite some time and I'm going to see the completion, which is just fantastic. Uh, so I want to thank my colleagues because uh, one time when we started going for an expansion, we needed some more money. We took on a little bit of debt and used a little more general fund money. But we have something that will last, uh, something we can be proud of, something that the children and adults can use for many, many years to come. I also wanna thank the taxpayers of Stanislaus County. There is, Measure S was renewed and uh, with a huge margin. Uh, so people wanna, wanna see libraries, they wanna improve libraries. We've got 14 libraries in Stanislaus County and it's not easy uh, to, uh, we did the Empire Project, we did this one. And now we have to do small improvements. There's not going to be replacements. But the, without the taxpayers determining that this is a priority for them, it, it wouldn't be possible to do this. So a uh, big thank you uh, to the friends of the, the library. I, I think they've said it over and over and over again. It's, it's unbelievable, uh, the, the, the dedication, fortitude. You'll see that they have their own room in there. And it is awesome. It is awesome. And they're selling books, a dollar for a hardback and 50 cents, I think I heard yesterday, uh, for uh, paperback. Uh, please go in there. Uh, there's great donation opportunities, but they've just done such a good job of making uh, what, what, we, what was our vision better uh, through this whole process. Uh, the third uh, group, the city of Turlock. I want to thank them for supporting this effort and the wonderful new asset to your city, but it's been a collaboration. We talk about this whole footprint. There was actually talk in the beginning of moving this library location to some other location. It might have been cheaper, and, and that was a no-go for everyone. It's, it's a beautiful park-like setting uh, set between schools. You've got the, the high school, Turlock High School over here, but it's just a great location, and it will be completely utilized. So I want to thank the city of Turlock. And then I have to thank my, uh, our uh, capital projects team, but our former assistant CEO, Patty Hill Thomas, you know, it, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes, you're going to hear of a lot of people who made this possible today, but there's always one person that's been there uh, like pushing and shoving so that we come on time and on budget. Another project. Uh, we've built a lot of detention facilities for lack of a better word, but this is where we want to invest our money. We have to invest our money and, and other things, but this is where we want to invest it because this has long-term benefits for uh, the citizenry, the 550,000 citizens of Stanislaus County. So with that, I, before I do it, I have something for Patty Hill Thomas that I brought and it was really good. Um, Blumen uh, Flower Farms, which is Sandy Dirksy. This morning I asked her and she puts these nice bouquets together. I asked her if she could get some roses together uh, for Patty Hill Thomas. And I'm sure that Jeff helped her go cut this morning. I'm very confident, but it, it is such a minor thank you. And you, Patty doesn't like the limelight, so I shouldn't be doing this, but uh, there's an engine behind everything. And she's been the engine on this project for so long, as well as, uh, you know, hundreds of other projects, the Gallo Center, 10, 10, 10th Street, all of our detention facilities, long-term, our corners facility. So I love you. And she's been retired now, retired. <laughs> <laughs> for about a year and three months and she continues to not be retired which is great for us so i'm going to walk over there really quick give her some roses i
So the Friends of the Library, the, we've heard about the money that was raised and you will, when you walk through, you will see improvements to the inside. And I'm not gonna still pass thunder because you're probably talking about it, but there's some really neat things that their money went towards to really make it a better experience for all. So again, uh, big kisses. The last folks I wanna thank are the, uh, the, the employees of Stanislaus County who work in the library. Uh, I feel very fortunate. There's about 150 of them between full-time and part-time. Uh, exceptional. They created an exceptional experience. Uh, and Sarah is going to be speaking uh, shortly. Karina, raise your hand. So is the new librarian. She's moving from, De oh, she did move from Denaire over here to Turlock. And what a great job uh, coming out of Denaire. And her new assignment started over here in June. And voila, brand new library to work with. Uh, great, uh, great having you here. And uh, Diane, who was the librarian here who just recently retired. She pretty much uh, helped shepherd this process through and uh, just wanna thank them and again, the other employees because that's what truly makes the experience possible. So I think I talk about uh, Robel and built this. And I, again, I don't wanna steal the thunder because I know that people are gonna be um, talking about it. our capital projects team, LDA architects, uh, this is truly using the Olympic euphemism that it's a truly gold winning performance. I think you're going to see that when you go in there, but it will be a great new library again for children's teens, adults, and exceptional. Uh, my last quote that I have of the day, which is a real easy one. And it's from Harry Potter. <laughs> when in doubt, go to the library. Here we are. So thank you very much uh, for showing up today. Uh, we'll have some awards. I'm going to call up Pat Portwood, president of the Friends of the Library. Well, good morning, everyone. It's This is uh, such a celebration. I might start to cry because uh, it's been a long journey. And um, so when we were last here, I don't know if you were here, but um, the groundbreaking on February 22nd, 2020, who would have thought that a pandemic was coming, right? That the world would just basically shut down, including the libraries. So the fear was, will this project continue on? Well, guess what? Ours is a story of it was meant to be. I truly believe that. The Board of Supervisors continued on with their plans for construction. Then even though the libraries were closed, actually it was the perfect time to build the library, if you think about it, uh, <clears throat> and build they did. Every week we saw progress, but especially when the walls went up and you could begin to visualize. So what else was going on during construction? Well, there are times when words do not suffice, and this opening is one of those times. We are grateful, we're so excited, we are so appreciative. The fundraising committee led by Jeannie and John Ferrari, and I don't know, did Jeannie and John get here? I haven't seen them. Where are they? They, okay. Uh, well, let me tell you, if you've ever worked with Jeannie and John, you know they were a force to be reckoned with. And when she decided, and he decided, we want a new library, bingo. So we were on a roll. They chaired the fundraising committee. They raised, as has been stated, approximately 1.4 million to augment furnishings, technology, and most importantly, to sustain our library for years to come. It's not gonna be, you know. So thank you to our incredible community and community leaders. Um, and to the pioneers, Hannah and Dieter Renning and some of the folks that we saw at the, pioneer, at the um, groundbreaking, they've had this dream since 1984, 1994. And when I came on board, it was around oh, after I retired, 2011. And it was like, wow, we're still on the journey. But look, it's actually happening, actually happening. The Friends of the Turlock Public Library Board met monthly during this time. And we via Zoom, my favorite, not favorite thing, but um, making decision, decisions on how to spend the monies that were coming in and to keep the public informed about those expenditures. You're going to see as you walk through, oh, such things as the, the most beautiful furniture and wonderful, wonderful digital kinds of things. You're going to see the 3D printer. I couldn't get, I think it's gonna be, we're gonna end up having to buy another one because it's so popular already in one day. So um, it was an amazing thing. We continue to look at needs and we will continue to see our library grow with that. So 
When you tour the library, you will also notice the family names that are sitting on the donor wall and around on the rooms for those families that have given so generously. The donor wall has over 200 names. That's pretty incredible. And you will see additions to every room that were approved by the board. So take time when you go through there. I know it's self-guided, but take time and really look. It's the little things that have been added that is gonna make this an exemplary library. So I thank you, my board, the board. We worked together, interesting year. Hands up over there, we're raised. Yes, thank you so much. You've been fabulous. And as everyone's been saying already, but I'm gonna reiterate, I cannot say enough about the leadership from the county. Having been in education and some you know, other um, bureaucratic organizations <laughs> so, uh, throughout this journey, I have just can't say enough about the leadership from the county. They listened, important characteristic of leaders, to our needs and wants. They respectively worked with the community and it was a continued partnership until the completion. So this is due to Vito, our District 2 um, supervisor. Yeah, yeah. Our champion. That's how I've always connected with him. He's a champion of the libraries. And my good friend, I think I can call her that now after uh, you know, how many years we've worked together, uh, Patricia Hill Thomas, the consummate prof professional and her incredible team. So I thank goodness that she did not retire. Um, as well, of course, I want to thank Sarah Denton that I've gotten to know, who upon her arrival, can you imagine? New job, and you walk in, and, okay, you got to build a few new libraries. And by the way, it's a pandemic. So it was like every challenge she could have done and she handled them all amidst all her responsibilities. But you know what she learned? She learned quickly. Turlock is no ordinary city. <laughs> and how much the community loves their library. So we're not a quiet group. And uh, when we're happy, we're happy. When we need to open up and speak, we tend to do that. Okay, so they, um, I just can't say enough. And everyone here should take note, especially if you're in leadership, on you know, how to maintain this type of collaboration. And my hope for the new supervisors, okay? I have to get this in, might as well, right? Uh, is that you will embrace your district's library and visit it, not just to celebrate, okay, but to honor the foundation of a true democracy, which is a free library system. Read a story during story time. I know some people who have done that. Meet their friends group and become the constant advocate because that is what is needed for our county libraries. So as with, as with any great book, at least from my perspective, you don't want it to end. Okay, but it is not ending, all right? We now look at the next chapter. You can look forward to the Turlock Library being a model, a model of excellence for many years with events, programs, and memories for generations to come. I just wanna say it's been my privilege to have been a part of the journey. Thank you. Oh my gosh, he agrees. So the, the writing is so small <laughs> that it says rawr, 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 to me. <laughs> Stanislaus <laughs> County Turlock Library established uh, um, August 9th of 2021. Friends of the Turlock Library, in grateful appreciation for your inspiration, dedication, generosity, you made the, the dream a reality. And you, you can hear from her speaking. Uh, she has passion. She does not take no. <laughs> for an answer ever and she's been a, a great go-between uh, between the community so that uh, she could sit through the friends of the library and then she could articulate back to patty hill and myself hey, this is what we need to do this is where people are leading so uh pat forward you've been a, a great asset and we love you for sure thank you so much thank you so much Thank you. And I know that uh, I think the board just had meetings on the capital improvement project for the other libraries. We are having discussions to see, trying to prioritize as we do with all other things. So next up, we have uh, the county librarian, Sarah Denton.
Thank you. Um, I too was thinking back to February 22nd of last year. Um, I don't know how many of, I, I see a lot of people who were there last time um, and some new folks, but if you remember, it was a beautiful day. There was a big yellow machine over here. There were lots of shovels. Um, it could not have been a more perfect day. Last February, I talked about what makes a library, the building, yes, and it is a beautiful building, um, but also what's inside the building the collections of materials, the places where learning and reflection happen, the interactions between staff and the public. These are the things that combine to make the library happen. I also talked a little bit about what we have to look forward to. And I have to say, I cannot wait for you to see what's inside because it is so beyond my expectations and I have very high expectations. So um, it really is fantastic. So 60% increase in size, expanded children's spaces, both indoor and outdoor improved spaces for teens, flexible programming in the maker space and the quiet reading room, the friends space, which is really, um, as mentioned, lovely, and I do hope you go check it out, um, but also study rooms and a community meeting room. The Turlock Library did not have a community meeting space. And so this room that has capacity for more than 100 people is going to enable all sorts of meetings to happen. Um, it'll allow for expanded programming. It's really exciting and, um, and uh, something that we were waiting for for a really long time. So here we are. The building is complete. It is on time and it is under budget as we do here in Stanislaus County, yes. I am so excited for you to see what we have created here. And when I say we, I really do mean it. This library is an expression of the community. It's a physical manifestation of a shared vision. This library is the vision of the Turlock community started first in 1907 when the first local library was founded. That vision was reaffirmed in 19, reaffirmed, excuse me, in 1916 with the Carnegie Library. And again in 1968, when the library moved to this site, then culminating most recently in this beautiful expanded space. It is the vision of Stanislaus County leadership, particularly our Board of Supervisors, who have supported libraries across the county and this project in particular. It's the vision of the Friends of the Turlock Library who spearheaded a donation drive that raised more than a million dollars to move this project from excellent to extraordinary. Finally, this library, like all of the libraries in the county, is the vision of the voters of Stanislaus County who have voted five times to fund library operations through our sales tax. Yeah, we can clap for that. <laughs> um, the Turlock Library is a shared vision, and it is also a solid investment with proven results. We've talked about how libraries benefit communities. Certainly, I can tell you stories, um, but anecdotes are not data. The good news is that we have data that proves that this is true. A national study released just in April of this year indicates that capital investment in public libraries, so building and renovating libraries, results in increased library usage overall, increased library checkouts by children, and most, most interesting to me, increased reading scores in nearby school districts. Improved libraries improves outcomes for members of our community. Research done in the state of California has found that for every dollar invested in libraries in this state, local economies see an average return of between three and six dollars. Investing in libraries feels good. We know it makes beautiful things happen, but it's also a smart investment because it improves community outcomes. As part of the design process for the Turlock Library, a number of community meetings were held. We've heard about some of those. In 2017, the group came up with their vision for the library. That vision is connecting us with our community and with the world. And I have to say, after this year, when so many of us have felt alone, when we have been separated, not just from our world and our community, but even our parents and our friends and our grandchildren, so many of us experience, have experienced worry and separation. This kind of connection is absolutely more important than ever. And I am so happy that we are able to gather in person and you'll be able to come in and see the space that we have created. Libraries connect us with our community and with the world. Thank each and every one of you for everything you have done to make this connection possible. And I am so happy to be with you today. Um, I'm now going to bring up 
Patricia Hill Thomas, project manager. Um, I'd like to say that I hope we're also friends and she doesn't know this, but I also consider her somewhat of a mentor. Um, her history of the library goes back very far. I have uh, been reviewing some records and found some correspondence from 1988 um, when Sterrett Christman, the library director at the time was, uh, was complimenting some work that Patricia has done to help her um, organize some library issues at that time. So with that, I'm gonna bring up Patricia. As typical of a board chairman, I forgot to do something. So I'm gonna jump in front of Patricia Hill really quick. So does any, is anyone familiar? There was a, uh, a poem written for the library? No? Yeah. Yes, yeah, I know, we know, you're gonna see it. But Stella Baratis, uh, Stella, if you could please come forward. So. It is truly amazing. And I, oh, she brought a piece of paper with her. <laughs> that would be awesome. Are you gonna, you gonna give it? Yeah, I, oh, sorry. Oh, yes, that is written on there, and it's so awesome on the plaque. No, no, you, I, I hope you do. But again, on behalf of the Board of Supervisors, it's, it's the people of the community, and I think we just heard it, that make a library a library. It's, it's not the county that makes, it's the people. And this will be a great indication. So Sarah's going to recite. The poem she wrote, and this well, is. I'm going to read it, but <laughs> okay, here. all right, read, read, please. So the entire poem, huh? <laughs> it's a long one, so I just want to make sure. <laughs> so thank you so much to uh, for asking me to be um, a part of the ceremony this morning, and thanks to the Turlock Friends of the Library for asking me to write this poem. The title is "In One Library We Find a Chapel, in Another a Star." To this poem. Let us bring our questions, the way we bring our burning questions to a higher power or to a librarian. Let us be transformed and remade simply in the asking, how long does it take to walk from Turlock to Fresno? Does my body contain stardust? What is the forgotten train depot on B Street? The library makes and remakes us as we make and remake our city serves as a node in a larger pattern which, when viewed from afar, takes shape as a mythological creature, a familiar animal, an intercontinental train route, or the most human of forms, a body. We revere the smell of pages unturned, the leaves of our historical imagination alive, crackling with possibility those bodies of work. The library is a train or a wheelhouse connecting our neural tracks, where intelligence, learning, erudition, scholarship, and know-how converge like locomotives on a turntable, the way they are held and rotated slowly and sent forth back into communities loaded with new cargo. The library transforms a city, becomes its own body of work, a library is a coherent strategy. That's just one answer to those many questions inadvertently raised by the Women's Improvement Club in 1907, when it set into motion an idea, a reading room, then a lending library, then more. In 1916, a classical revival library funded by Andrew Carnegie and the efforts of local women during a time of immigration and assimilation, a moral duty to reform and educate, yet also an idea so innately and sweetly subversive, its potential yet to emerge. Oh, people, your power, the library, made of spirit and sweat and love, is a tradition that emerges from the early 20th century and continues to this day in a new offering to you. This place we have reshaped together, fighting for years for budgets and stars to align, making it clear that we truly are the ones we have been waiting for. Our multiple histories stud the horizon, starlight only now reaching our eyes, illuminating the aisles where we browse the new titles, 
our heads tilted sideways. We bend to the library, to the book, in this ritual that makes sacred the act of reading, of noticing, of being in community with each other. Let us be transformed and remade simply in the asking, who can I be? What makes a city a place? What makes a building a library? Let us consider all the questions. Thank you. So it will hang in the library. That poem will hang in the library uh, from now on. And that was a, a copy of the poem. So now I'm going to turn it over to Patty Hill Thomas. Good morning, Turlock, and good morning, Stanislaus County. I am pretty sure I'm amongst a large group of very happy people today, but I might be the happiest and I'll probably talk about it. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of what I think is a historic day. <sighs> what a time we've had. Um, remember back February 22nd, 2020, we were right over there. We can't be there anymore. There's a library in the way. We had the most delightful children singing, children making music, lots of shovels. I see the team rolling, lots of heavy equipment. Thank you, Charlie. And a happy day. And I don't think we had any clue what was right around the corner. And in the most positive note, what was right around the corner is this beautiful library. But the pandemic wanted to stop us, stop us in so many ways, and it didn't. So I am so grateful and I have the best job at all, of all, and that is to recognize the people who made this happen. But before I do that, um, I remember meeting Ken Winham, the president and CEO of Roblin Contractors. And I had a costume malfunction that day at the groundbreaking for the Juvenile Commitment Center, another successful on time and under budget project. And that was the first day Team Roblin came into the Stanislaus County family. Having constructed that project, our REACT Center, yes, Rito and I were talking about that Friday night, and two beautiful libraries, Empire and Turlock. This team is incredibly talented. They are incredibly strong, they listen well, and they deliver. So I would like to introduce Mr. Ken Wenham, who's going to speak to us this morning from Roblin Contractors. Ken? Seems like I always uh, follow some amazing speakers, and it's a tough act to follow. But, but thank you, everyone, for inviting us to partake in this awesome celebration. You know, 30 odd years ago, I got into construction because I loved pouring concrete and pounding nails. I stayed in construction because of days like today. It's the most incredible, best day in a contractor's life when you get to see the facility occupied for its intended use. It's also a day that as a CEO, I feel real guilty because I didn't pound a single nail over there. Um, I'd like to take a second to recognize the Roblin team that made it happen. You know, Tony Gonzalez, Daniel Tripp, Charlie Huntley, those were our boots on the ground. They were supported by Patty Espinoza, Brian Todd, um, Ryan Israel was our estimator and he squeezed that budget till it screamed. And then, and then some more. And then we're all fell under the leadership of uh, my business partner and our chief business development officer, Bob Chomey. Now, we wouldn't have gotten very far without a great architectural partner in LDA. So I, I, I appreciate the efforts of Paris Allen and, and Neri Cole. So thank you very much for all your hard work. 
now we do work all over the, the state and I can honestly say Stanislaus County is, is our favorite place to work. Um, and it's because of the people. When we get the call that there's a potential opportunity here, we get real excited in our office. We get excited for a chance to work with Patty Hill Thomas. And then that excitement turns to fear because <laughs> not only does she have the biggest heart of anybody I've known, she also holds our feet to the fire more than anybody I've ever known. And she's tough, but at the end of the day, we always know that smart decisions will be made, everyone will be treated fair, and that's what makes us always eager to come back. And you have an amazing team that we interacted with, you know, so um, Al, um, Valencia, um, Rick Rodriguez, and Andy Johnson, just, just, you guys are true professionals. Um, the county's lucky to have you and you should be very proud of what you've accomplished here. And, and finally, I'd just like to say, it didn't take us long to realize there's something special in this county. I mean, I, when we hear the stories, this is a tight knit special group and we just sincerely thank you for welcoming us and, um, and treating us so well. So thank you. Well, my husband's hearing for the first time in 42 years that I might be tough, so I might have a trouble working that down. Well, I'm going to interrupt my uh, program. Thank you, Ken, so much. And Team Roblin, I'm going to get to you. Eric Wool and Paris Allen, come on forward. Only a few people in this audience know the backstory about the design of the Turlock Library. And while it's a pretty library, it wasn't always a pretty story. And there were tough decisions to make. And when um, Roblin, the team Roblin, brought in LDA as the architect of record, and we met our old friends again, Eric Wool and Paris Allen from LDA up in Stockton, great architects who have worked successfully on many county projects. We knew we were in good hands. And you'll see some features today and outside and around that are a real tribute to their creativity, their cost consciousness, and their stick to itiveness. So Eric, I love you. Paris, I love you. This is for the firm. We have something for you each. But I wanted to call you out and thank you. Job very well done. Thank you. Well, let's get on with it. I know you want to get inside, but there's a lot of people to thank. So I think it's fair to say we did it, and we did it together. Thank you, Ken, for your remarks. Thank you, Vito, for your kindness to me also. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Pat. We are friends. We were lamenting just last week that we're sad to see it over because there was such a, a synergy of kindness and friendship during the whole time. You all know me. If you know me, you know I'm a baseball fan, right? There's no doubt about it, and the Giants are in first place, Jody, so it's all good. I declare today the end of the baseball season, and uh, they will win the World Series by our declin declaration. Will the board members agree? That would be good. All right. So I love this quote of Babe Ruth. I love the words of others so, so much better than mine. The way a team plays as a whole determines its success. You may have the greatest bunch of individual players in the world. But if they don't play together, that club won't be worth a dime. Well, I'm here to tell you all that this club is priceless and this team as a whole has played together. And it takes a team. Vito talked about that small community of thoughtful people dedicated to a shared purpose. In the case of the Turlock Library, this is, I agree with Supervisor Kesa, a team of champions to the friends of the library and to your fundraising committee and to all of you. We have something for all of you today. We have lots of little reminders of what a tribute this should be to you and your tenacity and toughness and fairness and kindness and determination for your community. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Pat Portwood, I have something I made you and I'll bring it to you right when this is over but I could never, never, never thank you enough. 
Well, we spent a lot of time together on computer screens and with masks on, and we did form that, that bond. Um, Pat, when you go inside, and Cheryl's gonna hold it up, not yet, but in a few minutes, we have a tradition of doing a team plaque. Everyone who was someone, big or small part in this project's name is on the team plaque. So for generations to come, or for their children or their grandchildren or their friends, They'll see their name there. Look closely because we added a name and it says Pat Portwood, honorary member of the Stanislaus County Capital Projects. Okay, to the Board of Supervisors and to our CEO, Jody, and to our county leadership. I say this every time, and there have been a lot of every times for me. Thank you for letting us do what we do best. You trust us, and we deliver, and it's because of the team, not any individual player that Babe Ruth spoke about. It's that team, and we thank you for your leadership. We have something for all of you. Supervisor Chiesa, I'm not going to cry. I don't keep many secrets, as you know. Um, this is your Turlock Library. Ladies and gentlemen, there wouldn't be a Turlock Library without Video Chiesa. There would not be, and I ask you to chime in if I'm... You never gave up, even though there were some dips on that roller coaster ride. You advocated, you waited, you were patient. Supervisor Withrow reminded us of that often in the boardroom. We've waited a long time for these libraries. And Vito, we could never, ever thank you enough. I made you something. I'm going to give it to you right after this. I hope you always remember, and your wonderful wife, Jamie, out there somewhere, what an inspiration you are to me and to all of us. So I love you, Vito, and I wish you much happiness. You should enjoy today so much. So thank you. All right, Cheryl. That team plaque I spoke about is going to be uh, placed forever in this library. So Sarah, we can't ever move it. We'll have to use like Gorilla Glue, Super Glue and some kind of a fix that will never take it off. Thank you, Ms. Cheryl. Cheryl Oaks of Stanislaus County Capital Projects. On that team plaque, including our newest honorary member are the names of the men and women who made this project happen from contractors to library staff to to Capital Project staff and everyone in between, including all of the subcontractors for which there were a lot. This team plaque is a testament to everyone who made this project happen. So we're gonna hang it later. Cheryl, thank you for holding it up. It is definitely worth looking at when you go inside. Okay, Roblin. Okay, guys, you're all back there, Bob. Roblin contractors wanted to build the Turlock Library for a long time before there was a Tur Turlock Library project. And Bob would call me and my friend, Brian Todd, Brian. These are dear people who are good businessmen and who are great contractors, but they also have a heart, an absolute heart. When we decided, when the board decided the project was gonna proceed, we didn't get any contractors proposals for Empire. Hi, Bob, it's Patty. Would you think about, please, giving us a proposal, please, to build the Empire Library, please? You could maybe do it at the same time, please. You could maybe have some efficiency, please. And I think you could make some money because we have really good designs. Would you please? He's shaking his hand and he's giving me this. These are real stories, the story of the Turlock Library. And they did, they submitted the one proposal that we got. It was very competitive. It was under budget, sorry, Bob. And I'm confident they made money. But more than that, the pride of those two projects, particularly in the pandemic, is a story for a lifetime. So to Team Roblin, and I'm gonna introduce them all, and most of them are here today, and I am so grateful for you all. In addition to Ken Wenham, who we heard from earlier, thank you, Ken. Bob, show me. 
Bob, thank you. Brian Todd, right over here in the audience, every Friday, nearly every Friday, he'd call and say, how's it going? Oh, this part was bad. We had a positive COVID test and we'll get through it. And we did. These men and women that constructed this facility in these difficult times maintain the highest ethical standards of safety. And every time we had to pause, there was an immediate response to ensure the health and safety and welfare of the team and the project. Tony Gonzalez, I have your letter on my desk at home. Where are you, Tony? You did a great job. Thank you. And thank you to Team Roblin for bringing us Tony. Ryan Israel, Ryan, are you here? I am amazed you will ever talk to me again. He's the numbers guy, and he did squeeze those numbers, and I had very little to do with it, really, Ken. Ryan, you are magnificent, and we should put you on the county budget. You know how to work numbers really, really well. <laughs> Daniel, are you out there, Daniel? Daniel Tripp, great guy. Uh, Jay and I, my husband and I, would often come to the Turlock Library at least three times a week and nearly every weekend to check it out after everyone went home. And one night, and it was like five o'clock, 5.30, and there was a pickup truck here in the driveway. And so I get out and take pictures. I have a thousand pictures through the fence. And Daniel's in his car watching me. I have no idea he's there. And I think that I'm really grateful he didn't call Turlock police like I did this Saturday when I was here. Uh, Daniel Tripp, Daniel Gonzalez, Patty Esposito. Are you out there, Patty? I think I saw you. Design manager, great job. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Charlie, where are you at? There he is. He brought a big piece of equipment that Sarah talked about and he never left this job site until it was done, day and night. You did a beautiful job, your whole team, but Charlie, you are the best. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, and Edgar, I don't know if you're here, Edgar Tanako, thank you. So Team Roblin, we have something individually for each of you, but we have a heart full of grateful appreciation for all of you. Thank you. All righty. I know you all want to see the library, but this is a really important part. I've already recognized our design team. Thank you, Eric and, and Paris. You came in at a challenging time. You listened, you listened, you listened a lot. Well, maybe not about the rooftop air conditioner, but you listened a lot and you delivered. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We have more recognition for you here. At the county we built, and I think uh, someone said this earlier, maybe it was you, Supervisor Kesa, uh, jails, performing arts center, so many other types, but we'd never, this team had never had a chance to do a library. And I'll tell you, if you get to pick on the menu of life of what to want to build, you wanna build a library because people want you to be here. They want to be pleased and they want to please you. So for me personally and our team, it was a gift. I know that our my longtime friend, Judy Ferrara, former librarian was introduced by Jody Hayes. I know Diane McDonald is in Wisconsin watching us. So hi, Diane, and welcome. The day Sarah hit the ground running was a day I knew we had somebody to keep up with, Sarah. I love your enthusiasm. I love your powerful positivity, your thoughtfulness. I think we spent about 8 million hours on a, on a computer screen together and I am forever grateful for you, my friend. Thank you. Brian Sontag, Brian, I saw you. There you are right in front of me. I don't know if Thomas Caps is here today. Susan Lilly, I saw, John Fleming, Curtis Lee. John, we spent all of us a weekend trying to get the technology here. And if you're here today, I am grateful for you right over there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, everyone else on the library team, you are the best of the best of the best. So thank you all. We have something for every member of our team from the library to remember this special time. I didn't see him here today, but Keith Box is the one that first and then followed by Vito asked our team to come in and work. Um, I wanna thank our um, lawyers, Joan Cox and Terry Rain, who support us and guide us and our county council, Tom Bowes. Public contracts uh, projects aren't always easy but they take a lot of skill and determination. We're blessed with a very great legal team. 
Um, when I met most of you, it was 2017 at the Carnegie, and I didn't see them here today, but David Crody and Alan Bright really guided us through a challenging and inspiring day to figure out what it was this community wanted. And I hope when you see it today, you'll see what you all wanted. That is um, really uh, the heart of my honor of leading these projects for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in county capital projects. They weren't all easy. I'm not sure any of them were easy, but we did it and we did it here again in Turlock. We did it, you did it, thank you. I started out on a little $27 million project. It was awarded to a contractor on the, the day of my son's first birthday. And um, that led to an incredible career for both the county and myself and our team of opportunities to make positive change. I, um, I thought long and hard about what I say. My team gave me a beautiful book in uh, June in Empire and they had a whole page attributed to Patty-isms. They left one out, fortunately, that I said too often. And it was um, a good reminder um, about how important it is for people to stick together. And this Capital Projects team sticks together through thick and through thin. You know, I was wondering what should I say today? And I know that the words of others or the lyrics of others um, bring meaning to almost every occasion. And in this case, I called her a philosopher once and someone laughed at me, but the great Tina Turner sang brilliantly. And I won't sing for you today. But those words of Tina Turner, you're certainly the best, better than all the rest, better than anyone, anyone I ever met. That is the Stanislaus County Capital Projects team. They won't come forward. They might wave at me. They are brilliant, they are talented, they're dedicated, and the county is so fortunate to have them on our team. Andy Johnson, Al Valencia, Rick Rodriguez, Teresa Vanderveen. Kate, you did a great job. Thank you. We're Cheryl, Cheryl Oaks and Elsa Biedenwick who couldn't be with us today. I'm gonna say it again. And also a thanks to Leticia Lomelli for years of support for me and us. Repeat those words. You are simply the best. You are better than all the rest. You're better than anyone, anyone I ever met. So from my heart, I could never thank you enough. This was a good one, a challenging one, and one that we can always be proud of. I have a memento, the county has a memento from you but I made each of you a gift and I'll give it to you after this to always remember our good times together. And ladies and gentlemen, let's applaud the efforts of these wonderful men and women. A member of the Board of Supervisors staff on Friday who lives in Turlock sent me the sweetest note. And Friday was a day of nice notes and lots of tears at my little spot in my dining room. And she said, Patty, you make miracles happen. And I wrote back to her and I thanked her. How kind was that? But I said, no, I'm sorry. We make miracles happen and we do it together. So this is a place that generations of people we were often not meet will enjoy. I've been privileged to be involved in so many efforts and I've been privileged to say, many times over and over again, we did it and we did it together. With the help of our community, our professionals, our contractors, our subcontractors, our vendors, our partners at the city of Turlock, 
lots of help from Katie Quintera, from the folks at the fire department, the planning department, and Wayne York at uh, the transit department. Notice that beautiful new bus stop out on the front street. Good job. Thank you, Turlock. We appreciate you. So it's done. We don't have a flame to put out, but it's done. And it was brilliantly done by all of the men and women who are here and not here with us today. The big event is in just a few minutes. So when you go inside, and we're going to ask you to go kind of in small groups so we can stay distanced from each other, you're going to see right there on the corner a beautiful and very traditional bronze dedication plaque that will stand also for generations to come at this beautiful library that recognizes the leadership of the elected officials, the friends of the library, the contractors. And when you get inside, okay, Sarah, Pat, everyone, I'm gonna try to say it. The vestibule wall, yes. I spent a year and a half not being able to say that word and we called it the V wall. It is a tribute like nothing you'll ever see in any county project. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Sarah, Brian, Paris, Eric, Teresa, Elsa, Cheryl, Al. It is a montage of the history of library services in this community. It is a montage and collage and collection of old photographs, a beautiful story written by Pat Portwood about the starting of the Friends of the Library after Proposition 13 was passed. And it is a tribute to this community, to this library, and to this team for making a difference. And it will stand strong, and we will be proud if we don't ever go past that first vestibule door. The library is beyond, and it is beyond beautiful. So look at those fe features, please. I want to make sure I thank Lisa McDermott from the Carnegie for her help on that. I don't know if Lisa's here, but we have something for you, Lisa. Thank you. We have a memento from Scott Atherton. Scott, I've never met you, but I've heard of you, and I thank you for your help from the Turlock Historical Society and the Dean of CSUS, Ron Rodriguez. We do have something for all of you for your help. So, I am as proud as one can be to be a member of the Stanislaus County team. I am grateful you're here today, and I'm reminded of some words that I think have true meaning. Unity is strength. When there is teamwork and collaboration, wonderful things can be achieved. Welcome to the wonderful Turlock Library, and thank you all. Ask Jacob from Senator Borges' office to come up. Good morning, everyone. Uh, on behalf of Senator Borges, I would just like to congratulate uh, the Turlock Library on their dedication and reopening. Uh, thank you for uh, all of your contributions in the past years and in the continued future uh, in support of the pursuit of learning and knowledge here in the 8th Senate District and for our Central Valley community. Congratulations. I didn't know we were supposed to wear ties. I'm standing up there looking at my fellow board members are all wearing ties. All right, so without no further ado, lucky I'm not in shorts, right? <laughs> That's typical of me. Uh, without any further ado, the Turlock Library is now open for perusing. Please keep your groups kind of small, uh, keep some social distancing and enjoy what you see inside because I think you're gonna be really impressed. Thank you all for coming.